The Navajo people call themselves Dine. It means people of the earth, or simply men. After European settlers landed in North America, they have tried to resist the invasions of Spain, Mexico, and the United States. In the 1860s, the U.S. Army carried out a scorched earth campaign against the Navajo. The army burned their villages, crops, and orchards, slaughtered livestock, and poisoned wells. In 1863, the federal government forced over 10,000 Navajo and Mescalero Apaches to embark on a series of marches, some as long as 425 miles, to an internment camp called Bosque Redondo. Together, they are called the Long Walk of the Navajo. And we probably have the largest land base of indigenous nations in the United States because our land was seen as undesirable、um, at the time. You know, so it was just U.S. genocidal policy and practice. You think it's genocidal? Oh yeah, it's it's genocidal practice, absolutely. Along the way, many Navajo died. Those who couldn't keep up were shot. Those who couldn't swim drowned when crossing the Rio Grande. Raiders took slaves. After reaching the camp, disease, a lack of food, and freezing winters decimated the survivors. At gunpoint, they were coerced into adopting an alien way of life: farming, Christianity, individualism, and the English language. Some historians call the forced assimilation campaign a cultural genocide. My people suffered there and under some of the most atrocious, miserable conditions:、um, starvation, illness, um, uh, uh, prostitution. Um, you know, just all means of、uh, what war means on a people. News of their suffering spread. The United States sent peace commissioners to negotiate with the Navajo. When they finally signed a treaty in 1868, the Navajo say their operation did not end. While the treaty permitted them to return to their ancestral lands, the treaty still empowered the federal government to take resources from Navajo Nation and push for continued assimilation. The provision reads like for every 30 children there would be a teacher in a schoolhouse. To this day, the United States government has not fulfilled that treaty obligation. In the Navajo Nation Museum at Window Rock. There are hundreds of stickers on the wall in memoriam of their ancestors' heartbreaking journey. I was really struck with how vivid those stories of the long walk still are and passed down in the collective memory. If my relatives, my people, still remember these stories, just like like it happened last week, then it's telling you that this experience still affects us. Nearly 160 years after the Long Walk, the Navajo still struggle with the effects of its toxic legacy. The treaty preserved their sovereignty, but Denedale says the Navajo still feels the U.S. government owes them something, an apology. Xu Dezhi, CGTN, Navajo Nation, Window Rock, Arizona.